You're watching Detroit's own WHPR TV. Detroit Live. Hi, this is Brenda Perryman, and you can watch me 24 hours a day, seven days a week on the WHPR TV Now app. Download our free app at WHPR TV Now. Fridays at 9 a.m. and 10 a.m. Eastern. It is my pleasure, my pleasure, without further ado, to introduce you to my guest this morning, the great Mrs. Claudette Robinson, from straight from L.A., right here, <laughs> and my former student and my very good friend and a comedian and actress extraordinaire, Nortrice Banner. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. This was such a wonderful surprise, so great, so great, and I, I, I want to talk to Nortrice, which I am going to get to, <laughs> going to get to. But um, we all remember Claudette from the Miracles, and she sang with the men. So I love that. I re you rem <laughs> well, of course you remember. But I remember um, watching her on television. I said, and she's dressed so nice, and she she got the, all the steps that they're doing, she's doing, and all of that. So how did that come about? Well, um, to tell you how it all came about is um, my brother, Emerson Rogers, was um, a singer. And, of course, you have to remember, the, everybody was a teenager, yes. young teenagers. So whenever my brother had a group, I would have a group, but mine <laughs> would be all girls. Uh -huh. So when he became a orcarette, I mean, I became an orcaret, and he was an orchid. Now, orcaret was uh, the, the ty name of the group? The name of the group. Oh. So when he became a matador, I became a matador red. <laughs> so the, mat the matadors actually, when they finished their lineup, consisted of Bobby Rogers, Ronnie White, Pete Moore, Smokey Robinson, and my brother Emerson Rogers. Oh. So they went for an audition. An audition was about to come up, but the guys used to rehearse in our basement all the time. So um, with them rehearsing, I knew all their songs. Mm -hmm. Now, were these songs songs that were just out already? Or some were originals, uh -huh. and some were uh, just, you know, songs that were popular. So were they doing it? practicing a cappella or they had music or who was uh basically it was a cappella okay. yeah because we didn't have any instrumentation <laughs> well the thing is is that um my brother said nothing is happening with this group i'm joining the army and oh. that's what he did he joined the army and about a month later an audition came about and Smokey asked me if i would sing with them and i thought oh, how I old were you Oh, I was probably like two. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> you know, I was very young. <laughs> we were young teenagers. Yes. And uh, I wasn't sure if I could sing with them because, you know, they were guys. So I thought the harmony would be too low. Because I was not going to be the lead singer. Smokey was always the lead singer. Oh, okay. So, uh, he had a light voice. Well, he was actually at that time, he was singing in the soprano section of his high school uh, choir. Okay. So his voice was a natural uh, first tenor. Okay. And uh, we went to the audition. I actually did go <laughs> with him to the audition. And when we got there, um, the guy said, the world does not need another group that has a girl in the background. So what he was talking about were actually were the platters. Uh -huh. And so we had no plans of being like the platters. The platters, you know, did like a lot of... Um, I love the platters. Oh, absolutely. Though. Amazing group. 
But we wanted to do like more like rock and roll, dancing, you know, no gowns. Yes, they did standards up for the They most did part. most mainly standards, mm -hmm. yes. But an amazing group, talented, every one of them. So, you know, I wasn't that disappointed because I really wasn't a part of their group. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> uh, they were really disappointed. They were almost about in tears because really? they thought this was their real chance to make it. And they had practiced it. so much. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And had been singing for a while because first they were the five chimes, then they became um, the matadors. And um, so, you know, it was like this is our opportunity. But I don't think anybody was even 17 yet. I think everybody was either 16, 17 around that, wow. around that age Where group. Where were you in high school? Where did you go? I went to the High School of Commerce. Okay. Yeah. Business. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> well, after we um, were about to go home, there was this gentleman walking around, and he kept paying attention to the group. And he said, um, he walked over to Smokey, and he said, um, do you have any more of those songs? Smokey said, yes. And he said, how many? He said, 100. <laughs> And he began to show him these songs because he wanted to hear what did we have, you know. And as a result of that, um, he finally introduced himself and he said, my name is Barry Gordy. Well, at that time, you know, this is a long time ago, Barry Gordy was known for being a, um, an amazing songwriter. He had written all these hits for... Um, Lonely Teardrops, didn't yeah, he write he had, that? Yes, that for the, Jackie Wilson. I know. And you know Jackie Wilson uh, in October is going to get his star on the Hollywood right. Walk of Fame. Right. Yeah. Right. So anyway... Um, and it's about time. It is. It is. But I think sometimes when people are deceased, it takes sometimes a little longer than it would, you know, if you're still alive. So what, what happened, Barry Gordy? Saw well, you. there was no um, Motown yet. Right. So this, the year is 1957. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, <laughs> probably I wasn't quite born, but, you know, yeah, I, right. I heard about it. None of us were. <laughs> None of us were. Yeah, right. So as a result, <laughs> this is funny. Uh, <laughs> as a result of that, um, we started working with Mr. Gordy. And as we start working with him, he said, you guys have got to get a record. And so uh, our very first record, there was no Motown yet, was a song called Got a Job, which Got was an job. answer song right. to Get a Job right. by the Silhouettes. And the guy that had produced uh, a lot of hits for the uh, Frankie Lyman and the Teenagers mm -hmm. was the one that owned the record company. And that was George Goldner out of New York. Okay. Well, our very first time out, you know, we heard it on the radio and we thought we did pretty well. well. What was your feeling when you first heard it on the radio? Well, for me, it was absolutely exciting because you're hearing your voice for the first time. And when you hear your voice, it's much different than when you're hearing it through your own ears. Right. And so it's like, of course, I thought, well, now the guys will, you know, get a hit and they will have their careers going. And I wasn't sure if I was going to stay in the group. <laughs> because my thought was, um, you know, I had wanted to be a teacher. So I thought, um, you know, we, we'll do it for a couple of years and see what happens. And as a result of that, when, and actually when we received our first check, I was almost certain I was going to continue my <laughs> education. <laughs> Because the check cents. was three dollars and nineteen cents. <laughs> really? Yeah, that was for all of us. For all, all of you. Yeah, all you five. had to divide that by together. four. Yeah, by, by five. By five. Uh, yeah, and the guitar player as well. So it was probably six. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So yeah. you end up yeah. with forty-five cent or something. No, like well, like the, ca the three check cents. was never cashed. It's actually in the Motown Museum. Really? Yes, it is. Wow. So I remember got a job. But I remember Shop Around. Mm -hmm. That was the first, uh, I mean, we Shop Around played became, until it was white. <laughs> well, Shop Around was Motown's right. first uh, million seller. Mm -hmm. And that kind of like put the miracles as well as Motown on the uh, map. Right. 
But actually, our record, our very first record, you know, the first label was Tamla. Yes. And so we recorded almost all of our records on the Tamla label. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, shop around on Tamla? Yes. I, ha I still have <laughs> shop around. I have all my records from when I was 14. I still have them. And Henry Tyler, who's here, he always says, Ms. Pearman, are they in good shape? <laughs> I said, no, because you remember, well, you might not remember, because you were a celebrity at that time. We used to take, re we, when, when people had parties, we would say, well, what don't you have? I might have it. And right. so we get the records. We had the 45s, and we'd take them to the party, put our names on it, take them to the party. Right. Always got our records back. It was just such a good system back in the day. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, sometimes we had to put a nickel on that uh, arm of that record player to make it go right. right. So you, uh, you sang with the Miracles for how long? Uh, I sang with the Miracles actually from uh, 1957 to 1972. And you want to know where did I go? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I had unfortunately um, eight miscarriages. Okay. And, um, but I didn't have eight by the time I came off the road. But Mr. Gordy and Mr. Robinson decided that maybe the road was making me, my health, suffer. So they took the vote, which was not supposed to be them, it was supposed to be the group. Right. And a group wouldn't vote because we voted on everything, uh -huh. you know, because we sort of ran our organization as um, like democracy. a business. Yeah, and we really democracy. did. We really yeah. did. And um, the thing was is that I came off, I stopped performing in 1965. And um, I was not real happy about that. I want to let you know. Okay. <laughs> it was not my decision. <laughs> And, you know, because I didn't know if I'd ever have children. Uh -huh. So I was thinking, why am I coming off the road? Right. But the, I guess, like, what they decided is that I would actually sing on every record that the Miracles recorded. And so uh, that's why I say 1972, because I continued recording with them on every record. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. On the record... On the song, Ooh Baby Baby. Yes, ma'am. Why was it so short? Short? <laughs> well, the reason why I say that, because we were, at, you know, I was at a teenage time at that time. Yeah. And when they played it at the party, you just get your groove on and it's <laughs> over. And then we'd all stand there just still like statues right, right. until somebody put it back on so we could just finish the dance. Because we used to remember what well, they I used remember. to. <laughs> they used to call it Putin. I, they used to call it Putin because we were, we were dancing all close and everything. Close. It was just so nice. And then the, the song didn't, didn't seem to last two minutes. Because they uh, knew y'all was Putin. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was longer than two minutes. Oh. But, you know, sometimes as um, it was records so good. Were, <laughs> it was so good. as records were being recorded, you know, DJs didn't like for you to have them too long. Because, you know, they got to have their next rotation of play. So I don't think that that was the reason why, but I do think that it was probably just the it was, ordinary. It was um, such a good record. No, it was like a little it? shorter than other records. You think so? I know. I, I'm going to have to play that Motown. to see. <laughs> I mean, I studied it. Because, yeah, right, you know, right. what was so good about that day in particular, you just heard the Miracles have a new record. So you automatically went and got it, no right. matter what it was. You knew you were going to like it. And uh, and then you started, when you get a little older, you say, well, who wrote this? Who wrote this? You wanted to know where the words came from. Right. And for many of us, it was like the music, especially my age of 20, uh, no. But it's like the music of our lives, you know? Because anything that you do when you're a teenager, right. well, Two minutes and 40 seconds? The power oh of goodness. Google. It was. Uh, Two minutes and 40 Henry, seconds. My, uh, who's on my next show? Two yeah. minutes and 40 seconds. But I guess almost three minutes. Oh, I just, I guess it was so good. It just <laughs> didn't seem that long. See there? But, um, you know, all the steps. Okay, so once you all started, because I was, uh, I, you all did the Apollo Theater when you started Absolutely. doing the reviews, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, um. Uh, I was in the first row of the first Motown review 
only because we didn't stop at the candy counter at the Fox Theater. We got down to the first, and like I was telling somebody, I didn't understand. I saw that hole in the ground. I didn't know what an orchestra pit it was. was. Mm -hmm. And then I said, when they started coming up, you know, when they right. started playing, I said, well, they're going to be in front of the acts, but that's okay because we're still in the house with the act. <laughs> and then when the bandstand moved upstage, right, right. and then it filled in, and you all right. were right in front. That was just fantastic. How did it feel performing in front of the hometown crowd like that? Uh, in front in of the um, <laughs> Detroit audience? Detroit audience. Oh, that was actually a real thrill because of the fact that you were home. You had your family there, you know, your mom, your dad, your uh, cousins, whatever. <laughs> and so, you know, so they had an opportunity to see you. Because, you know, in the early days, it's not like we made a fortune. Money was a little tight, you know. And our very first um, Apollo date, we made $750 for the week. For the week? Yes, which we had to join the union, which was $150 for each one of us. For each one, so <laughs> you were in the hole. You were in the hole. Well, sort of, but uh, the union man took pity on us. And we paid, uh, the first was $50 down, and then with $25 at every union house after that. Do you know who I interviewed Tuesday? Yeah. Tony Newton. Oh, really? Yes, I did. Yeah. I did a special show because yes. he was in town. Right, right. And uh, I was called. I was out of town, but they said, I have Tony Newton here. Uh -huh. And I so the station had some time, and right, so I had right. Tony on. And he told me he worked with you guys. Oh, he certainly did. And he was an amazing artist, uh, yes. you know, bass player. Yes, yeah, yes, really, yes. Really, really a wonderful guy. So at the, I have a video of you all at the Apollo also. Really? Yeah, I do. Somebody well, I'll have them. to have that. Yeah, I do. <laughs> you don't have it? No, I don't. I'll, I'll try and get a copy made for you. Thank you. I, I actually had that. that. And um, it was just interesting because Marvin Gaye was on the show too. And the Supremes weren't well known, but they were no. on the show. Yeah. And uh, I remember that. Well, you know, at that time, which, uh, of course, they did amazing after that. Yes. But uh, the Supremes had been known as um, the no-hit wonders, <laughs> you know, because they tried so hard, and they made it. And when they made it, they just flew off the charts. Right. Because I think they had, what, 10 or 12 number one hits in a row. So that was better than all the other artists that had done now, Holland so. Now, Holland Dozier Holland did a lot of their songs. They correct? did. The ones that became hits, yes. Right. Because prior to that, Mr. Gordy, Smokey, I don't know how many other writers tried to get a hit on them, but they just couldn't. Huh. It was. It's all about timing. Yeah. You know, and if, if the timing is right, it'll happen. Now, you were around, when you all, you said that when you all started, and Barry asked, did he, Smokey, did he have other songs? He said about a hundred. Yes. Were any of those hundred used as you all went along? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think any of them were. So, did you, you know, because you and Smokey married at what, what year? Uh, 59. Oh, a couple of years after that initial. Right, after the initial meeting. Because that very first record came out um, February 19th. 1958 and that was both Bobby and Smokey's birthdays oh. they were born the same day same year same hospital and met what? each other 14 years how later how does that happen <laughs> how does that happen I you don't know, know. And I'm not sitting up ignoring my former student and my here she is I, I, you know, <laughs> but she, I, it's all right I got this opportunity it's all right yeah. and this I, is my special person right know, here so I know because it's she has always talked about you <laughs> It's all right. My aunt Claudette. Yeah, know. it's all right. I, it was a, it was a it's a blessing for me to be able to be a part of this this history and making right here, because Miss Miss Perriman loves you. She talks to, about you all the time oh, as oh, well as so I do. So yeah. it's all right. If it was anybody else, I would feel some kind of way, but I don't. I know. I know. So <laughs> what to you? Well, I, <laughs> I, well, I was going to tell you it. this is quite a surprise to me I because know. I she picked me up from the airport this morning and I thought I was just coming to uh, support her 
<laughs> and I don't know. Well, what you don't doing. walk into Randy Henry could tell you this. You yeah, walk he, into a television studio and not expect to go on TV. Um, <laughs> yes, but see, I know so much of, about Motown. And yes, it's, it's just such a part of me. But I do want to know this: uh, Were you all? Did you ever help on any of the songs writing of any of the songs? Uh, Smokey and I actually wrote a song together, but it wasn't on the Miracles. It was done by Gladys Knight and the Pips and uh, the Supremes. But unfortunately, it didn't become a big hit. Well, I think you wrote one together. Did yeah. he just stay up at night and write songs? or he just No, you know, Smokey, fortunately for him, uh, has a God-given talent that he has been writing from what I've heard since he was six years old. Mm -hmm. uh, in his first grade class, I think he wrote like a whole play or something for his class and so he's had that talent he writes well he did write at any time anywhere on any kind of uh, media or something because he would write on uh, um, a notebook mm -hmm. he would write on toilet paper tissues back of a checkbook whatever whenever the uh, whenever it hit him that he would get an idea, he would just write. So did you realize, uh, too, that when you all made records, back in the day with the 45s, we played both sides. Yes. Both sides were kind of hits to us. I mean, maybe it was a Detroit thing, but I was mentioning when uh, I went down to South Carolina, King Street, little town, uh, when I was a little girl, and well, no, I wasn't. I was really 16. That's and, a little uh, girl. And they talked about James Brown, and I said, James Brown? I'm from Motown. <laughs> I said, we, our groups were cool, and I had never seen James Brown. And yeah. then they said, well, he's going to be on Ed Sullivan. So we all gathered around a television because they were crazy over James Brown. And I mm -hmm. saw this man come out. He's shaking his head and the head mm -hmm. going back and forth, and I said. Oh no, Motown is much cooler than James Brown. <laughs> you know, it was just a different, you know, Motown had a flair. And did you, um, you always dressed, I always remember m m many times in a dress that came to your knees mm -hmm. and uh, a belt or either, it just fitted you, at the, you were just <laughs> in at the waist, you had a nice figure. And you're saying I don't know. No, I, <laughs> she said had. Oh, no, did she? No, did she said had, Miss Robinson? No, that's okay. I mean, no, you know I'm teasing oh, you, right? No, I was, I was getting ready to say I had a lot of things. We all day, had. I don't yeah, have, absolutely. Know. So, um, after, so you've been in California since when? Uh, seventy-two, seventy-three. Oh wow. Yeah, so, we've been there uh, forty-five, forty-six years. Now, you're still involved. You're involved with the HAL Awards, too? Uh, yes, I am. That's Heroes and Legends. And uh, it's uh, founded by Miss Janie Bradford, who is yes. a female songwriter and wrote the song Money. Right. With, along with Mr. Gordy. Right, right. In fact, I contacted her on Facebook uh, a few months ago, and I'm just hoping that I hear she'll be in town in September. Uh, she will. She'll be here on, I believe, the 19th. September 19th. Right, 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 right. And um, I just, I want to get an opportunity to meet her because a lot of us related to money. Yes. You know, that was a different kind of song. Absolutely. The best things in life are free, but you could give them to the birds and bees. I need some money. I need I some need money, <laughs> baby. So out there, um, you are involved with the HAL Awards. What are some of the other things that you do? Well, um, I'll, I'll start with, uh, I've always volunteered, and I volunteered in the school system from probably 1972 until, actually just recently, my oldest granddaughter, Lyric, just graduated from USC. Now, and how many children did you and Smokey have? Uh, two. A boy okay. and a girl. My son, my first, is Barry William Barope, which is Bobby, Ronnie, and Pete. <laughs> oh my God! So you got the whole miracle I got organization. All. Yes, down there. yes, yes. And then for my daughter, she's Tamla Claudette. Oh my goodness, Tamla Claudette. <laughs> yes. And Barry William. William, William after his dad. Okay. 
Right. And Barope is B O for Bobby, R O for Ronnie, and P E for Pete. Gee. We just want to get them all in. <laughs> get, them all, get them all in, just in case. He's just calling so, them all. How, are any of your children interested in show business or singing? Uh, my granddaughter, Lyric. She, her, how old is she? Uh, she's 22. And she just graduated. She just turned 22, and her uh, major is the music industry. Really? Yes. So it's business as well as uh, performance. Now, is she a singer? She is a singer, and she has her own style, and she, uh, that's what she'd really like to do. She'd like to sing, but she said if it comes to just doing the business, she'll do that. Well, you know, getting into, what do you think about these days, getting into the music business as opposed to the way it was back then when you and Smokey, Pete, and uh, everybody got in? Well, it's, uh, it's different, but things change. And um, sometimes for the better, and sometimes not. But the thing is, is that you have to change with the times. You cannot just stay stagnant and just think that you're going to still do the same thing you did in 1959. Right. <laughs> you know, it just Absolutely. doesn't work. And, uh, you know, it's something that you were asking me. Um, I want to tell you that, you know, Mr. Gordy, gave me the official title of First Lady of Motown. That's what, yes, yeah. that's what I was trying to think of this morning. And yeah. I said, I wasn't going to call <laughs> you the First Lady of Motown, which Absolutely. in many ways you were. Well, I was the First Lady of Motown because there weren't any other ladies. <laughs> there were only guys that were there. And so um, by being there first, because we started in 57, actually before Motown began. You know, you would never know it. You are so beautiful. Oh, my goodness. You are you so, are beautiful. so beautiful. You are so beautiful. You don't want Nortrice and I to start singing. <laughs> you run everybody yeah. out the studio. And, you know, I just finished a children's book. You did? I did. And it's going. I'm going to have it. It will... September 20th, I'll have it with me here at the um, Motown 60. Really? Yeah. What's the title of the book? Um, it is, you know, I probably get should get it for you. Oh, so you can see I'll it. get it. I'm not can doing anything. It? Yeah, it's just a copy of it. But, we will uh, see it. Yeah, you're going to be able what to see it. What was your inspiration it? for that? Well, you know, I've been trying to write my bio for the last probably 30 years. And my my love is always children right. and I thought you know I'm always like volunteering in the classroom I'm doing something so why not give them basically a history lesson on me yes and you call it Claudette's miraculous, miraculous Motown, Motown adventure Motown adventure right so you did you I did me and this covers, oh, this is so nice. <laughs> now Claudette had to stay inside every day because children couldn't go outside and play. That's right. And then she opens up the box, and guess what's in the box? Some little elves. And one is Smokey, Bobby, <laughs> Ronnie, and Pete. <laughs> and, and the rest is history. Uh, that's right. And but, uh, you know, look at, at everybody. There's a picture on the back <laughs> of her. Just like always, how was how was the camaraderie with the group? with the guys? Well, I was truly blessed because the guys treated me like royalty, really very respectful, always thinking of making sure I was safe, secure, and that th it was like having four bodyguards at all times. Right. And you know, a lot of females didn't have that. Yes. They had to really get out there on their own. But I tell you, with the guys being there, you know, they could put their arm up, like if someone was trying to, like, get through or, yes. you know, not behave in the proper manner. Right. I always had one of the four helping me. Wow. I just looked, and the time is up. It's almost time for my other <laughs> show. Oh, this, everyone, you saw it here first. Yeah. It'll this is Miss Claudette, the the. I first want to lady. Say first lady. <laughs> See, I was getting ready to put the queen of Motown. No, I was first getting lady. ready to put that on my Facebook page, but I just said the first lady of Motown. Here she is. This is her first book. First book. She's gonna have several. 
year because round. the saga has to continue. Absolutely, and I thank you for showing it to them. And I'm excited, and I'm excited. You've seen the film, Hitsville. Yes. It'll be on Showtime this Sunday, but there's a premiere tonight yes. at the Imagine Theater. Right. So I can't wait to see. You think we'll be excited? I think you will. I think uh, there will be some things that probably people don't know. Uh, it only goes to the end of uh, when everyone left uh, Detroit. Okay. Unfortunately, it, right at this time, but I think there'll probably be a number two uh, starting for California. The oh, California okay. group. Okay, yes. that's great. Mm -hmm. So I, I'll see you this evening. You will. Yeah, you I'll will. be there. Well, thank you. I just want to say thank you so much for having me, even though I didn't know I was going to be on, but I'm glad that I, I was. I didn't know either, and you know, when I met her back in the spring, I told her I wanted her to be on my show, but I never thought, God is so good. Thank you so much. I've loved her all my life, oh, and I love you. Thank you. you. And Ooh, thank I you, God, for allowing me to bring my Aunt Claudette for this <laughs> interview this and morning. Relationships are thank important. They if are. I had known her from high school and put her in I made you play a nun in the sound of music she made me play a nun yes right. she did well the drama teacher is still here so everybody stay tuned I have the National Basketball Retired Players Association I did it right I have Willie Norwood Randy Henry I have um, make, uh, make, <coughs> Macy Maceo Bastion I'm excited. I have and more here. So stay tuned.